and welcome to Water Quality. In this example, I'm going to investigate the solubility of stannous fluoride as an example. And I have shown here a, a precipitation dissolution reaction for stannous fluoride, where stannous fluoride dissolves into its ions. And I have an equilibrium constant uh, given. In the previous two videos, we uh, calculated the solubility of this solid first in deionized water and then in a lightly salty solution with 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter sodium fluoride where flu fluoride is the common ion for stannous fluoride and here we're going to um, solve the solubility in a more salty solution so we have uh, 0 0.08 moles per liter sodium fluoride Okay, so first of all, I've shown these two containers over here, and this is actually a time series. So we have an initial uh, container, and then that same container after some delta T or T period of time. So to start with, our solution contains sodium and fluoride. And that's it. So kind of the underlying assumption here is that this solution is made in uh, deionized water. Another underlying assumption is that we're doing this at 25 degrees C, which is the standard temperature. And in this problem, we're going to include the ionic strength effects. Okay, so getting back to our time series over here. So we start out, oh, I'm gonna put a, a knot here because that's like initial. And then we add in the stannous fluoride solid and we're adding it in uh, to the point of, of the solubility limit such that any additional molecules are not going to dissolve, but they're going to stay as a solid. So they're going to form a precipitant in the solution. Okay, so what that looks like, basically all of the stannous in the solution is from uh, that addition of stannous fluoride. And the fluoride, similar to the last video, is going to be two times the stannous concentration because there's two fluorides for every stannous fluoride molecule, whereas the stannous is just one to one. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is to solve for the ionic strength. And that's the mu, which is one half summation C times Z squared, where we sum this over all I species and um, I'm only going to include the sodium and the fluoride initially present because they're going to be orders of magnitude higher than whatever stannous fluoride gets added. So that's kind of a, an assumption, but generally a good assumption. So I have the, the, the sodium. And I'm going to write that down here so I don't get confused, which has a, a plus one charge and is present at a 0.08 molar concentration and then uh, the fluoride originally present and that looks like this oh and I did forget to do one thing here on uh, my fluoride concentration I also have to add what was there initially so that's a good thing to catch okay so this has um, an ionic strength of 0.08 and I'm going to write up my assumption only including the 0 0.08 moles per liter sodium fluoride in that mu calculation. And that's because it's just going to be so much higher than any stannous fluoride that's added. Okay, so the next um, step is to get the activity coefficients. And these are obtained from figure 3-4 in the textbook Water Chemistry by Snowink and Jenkins. And I'm using um, the Guntelberg approximation lines. And so for species with a plus or minus one charge, the gamma is 0.78. And then with a plus or minus two charge, the gamma is 0.36. Okay, and then uh, we'll solve for the solubility. And 
I'm using the mass action equation or equilibrium equation. So I have KSO is equal to, and I, I'm including ionic strength effects, so I use the activities. We're going to have Stannis activity, fluoride squared, and I'll replace with the activity coefficients times the molar concentration. Don't forget to square the activity coefficient for the fluoride. And let's see, so this is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 9. Stannis, 0 0.36. And the fluoride, 0 0.78. And for my fluoride concentration, I'll make the um, substitution. So I have 2 times the Stannis plus 0 0.08 and I solve this and I get 10 to the minus 5.91 moles per liter for the stannis for the fluoride which is um, let's see uh, so this is going to be uh, 0 0.08 plus 2 times the um, Stannis concentration. Uh, what we'll see is that it really doesn't change and so this essentially is going to stay at 0 0.08 and you know and a little bit more if you wanted to take that out further but I'm just going to leave it there. And um, what we can see is that, let's do a summary over here. And this is our solubility. In a 0 0.08 molar oops, sodium fluoride solution. So my summary over here, um, in DI water, uh, my solubility was equal to 10 to the minus 3.11 moles per liter. And the 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter sodium fluoride solubility was 10 to the minus 3.12 moles per liter. And in my 0 0.08 moles per liter sodium fluoride, my solubility is uh, 10 to the minus. 5.91. So as the ionic strength goes up, the solubility goes down. Um, and then also what we're seeing here is that we have the common ion effect. Where we're adding in the, the common ion, which is fluoride in this case, and uh, that's forcing out um, the forcing the precipitation of the stannis. Um, so what you can see, a couple things you can see here. One is that one way to uh, force out the precipitation of a metal is to add that common ion, and that causes the solubility to go down. So the metal will precipitate out a solution. It's a good way to reclaim metals. And then also, as the solution gets saltier, uh, the solubility goes down, and so it's more feasible to precipitate out a solid, which is one way to get metals to um, to come out of solution is to increase the sal salinity. And this also is something that you'll see in the natural environment, for example, in estuaries where saltiness uh, leads to the precipitation of some uh, salts. Um, so hopefully that's been helpful. Um, stay tuned for the next set of lectures.